Aspen has the ability to load e-content directly via API connection for Access 360, Cloud Library, Hoopla, and OverDrive. We can connect directly with EBSCOhost and EBSCO EDS. For more information about these vendors, please visit the Aspen Help Center and click the Integrations menu. E-content from other vendors can be sideloaded directly into Aspen. As long as the vendor can provide MARC records with unique record IDs, they can be sideloaded into Aspen Discovery. This means that you will no longer need to load those records into your ILS if you're already doing so. To get started with sideloads, first make sure that you have the sideload module enabled in Aspen. You can find this from Aspen Administration under System Administration, click Modules, find side loads and click into that. Make sure enabled is checked and then save your changes. Next, you'll need to make sure that you have the correct permissions to edit and administer side loads. To check this, go back to system administration, click permissions, select whichever role that you want to have this permission. Then under the cataloging and e-content section, you will need the administer side loads permission. The first part of setting up a new side load is creating a new side load setting. From Aspen administration, you'll want to go to the side loads module. If I start just typing in side in the setting search, that will bring up the module right away. Click settings, then click add new. First, you want to give the side load a name. This will become the display name for this collection in your catalog. Avoid using special characters here in the name like colons and parentheses. Next, you're looking for three different fields that have these curly brackets. So record URL component, mark path, and individual mark path. These are the three things that we're going to replace. Let's edit the record URL component. This actually becomes a part of the record URL for these records in Aspen. Because this will be part of the URL, make sure there are no spaces or special characters here. So since my name is World Book Kids, I'm going to delete this and type World Book Kids with no spaces. The next fields that we're editing are the mark paths. These paths tell Aspen to create a new directory on your Aspen server, and this is where the side load files will be stored. In the mark path field, you're looking for the part where it says side load name in the curly brackets. Delete only this part and replace it with the side load name. To keep things simple, you can copy the URL component and paste that in. Next, we're going to do the exact same thing to the individual mark path field. Delete everything inside the curly brackets and then paste in your record URL component. The only other thing to worry about at this point in the settings is to look for the record number. By default, the side load setting is looking in the 001 field for a unique record number. If you know your record numbers are in a different field, you can change that here. If your mark files don't have any record numbers at all, the side load won't work. If this is the case, try contacting the vendor to see if they can give you records with record numbers or you can edit the records yourself with a tool like Mark Edit. Double check these fields to make sure there are no special characters or spaces where there shouldn't be. Then scroll to the bottom and save your changes. In the majority of cases, this is all the configuration you need. We have other settings in here documented on our Help Center if you want to learn more. And I'm sure we'll make an advanced side load settings video in the future. Once you've saved your setting, Aspen will create a corresponding scope setting. The scope tells Aspen which library should have access to these records. From the side loads menu, click scopes, and then click the corresponding scope to edit. In these settings, select the libraries and locations that should have access to these records. 
If you're one library system sharing one catalog, you can do this quickly by clicking Apply to All Libraries and then Apply to All Locations. Make any edits if you need and then save your changes. Now that we've set up our settings and our scope, let's head back to the sideload settings to add our files. I'm going to select the sideload setting, edit. Now I can click upload mark file. Here you can upload your file in either .mrc or .marc format. Now, if you have a vendor send you a zip file with lots of separate MARC files within, you can technically still upload the zip file so you don't have to upload 50 different files one by one. As of this recording, what you'll need to do is upload your zip file, then submit a support ticket so we can unzip the file for you on the server. Otherwise, just uploading the zip file and doing nothing else isn't going to work. So let me find my world book file click open, upload file. Once you upload your file, you'll get a success message. I like to double check after uploading a file though. You can do this by going back to your settings and here click view mark files. Here I can see my file name, when I uploaded it, and I see numbers here in the size column, which tells me there's actually data in the file. So everything looks good here. Once the files have been uploaded, Aspen has to index the records in order for them to show. I can go to the sideload setting indexing log to check the status. The indexing process for sideloads runs every five minutes. So depending on the timing of when you uploaded your files, you might not see anything right away. Once the files have been processed, you'll see an entry for it in this log. And here it is in the log. I only had one record in my file, so this checks out. And now I can go see my side load records in the catalog search results. I can check this by doing a blank search, then clicking the eContent collection facet. Here I will see any eContent we connect to via API, as well as your side loaded collections. If you've been adding records like these into your ILS, you're probably used to getting files with additions, changes, and deletions from the vendor. While you could do that with sideloads in Aspen, it's far easier to download a new full collection file anytime they update their records. With a whole new collection file, I'll be able to edit the sideload, click upload mark file, select my file, and then I'll check the box for replace existing files. This will delete any previous file you've uploaded and replace it with this new one. If records existed in the old file that are no longer in the new file, they will no longer appear in Aspen. Likewise, if new records have been added to the new file, those will now appear after indexing. If for whatever reason you're not able to get a fresh new collection file when there are new or deleted records, you can select your mark file with the new records or changed records, then click upload file. And you'll want to make sure that this replace existing files box is not checked or you will lose the original full collection file you already added, plus any other files you've added before. For deleted records in this case, you'll want to head back to your side load setting, edit, and then scroll down to the box that says deleted records. In this text box, you can paste in just the record numbers for the deleted records. The record numbers can be separated by commas or line breaks. If you manage the side load this way, the list of deleted records here will stay here in the settings and you'll keep adding to it indefinitely or until you can get a hold of a fresh new collection file. In that case, you can delete this out and start with a fresh new beginning. If you've set up a side load and you're still not seeing records in the search results, here are some steps you could try. First, edit the side load setting and click view mark files. This is where you can verify if the file was actually uploaded. The file name should show here 
and it must have the correct file extension. So it should end with a .mrc or .marc at the end. If you don't see either of those extensions here, you'll probably need to add it manually to the file name before you upload it. If the file name here ends in .zip, then please submit a support ticket and ask us to unzip the file on the server for you. It's also a good idea to check the size column here to make sure that there's actually data in the file. If this number is zero, that means that there might be something wrong with the file because we're not able to detect any data in it. After you've confirmed that the file looks good, you might want to double check that the records you have have record numbers in the marked data. And then you'll want to check that the record number field matches the record number tag in the side load settings. Next, check your side load scope settings. I'm gonna click into scopes, click the applicable scope, scroll down and make sure you have all the libraries and locations that should have access to these records visible here. If they don't show up here, then the records will not show up in the search results for those libraries where they need to be. If all that looks good, you can try running a full update. You can do this from within the side load settings, scroll down a little bit, and then click this run full update checkbox. Then you'll want to save. Clicking run full update forces Aspen to process the records again the next time the indexer runs. And you can check on that indexer by going to the indexing log. Again, this process runs every five minutes, so check the timestamp and keep refreshing until you see your side loads indexed. If you're still having trouble at this point, please reach out to us with a support ticket and we'll be happy to help you.